Are you tired of staring blankly at a computer screen? Do you have no idea what to write? Have you given up hope of ever completing your first scientific paper? <laughs> yes, I have. Because I'm gonna give you a four step strategy. Five step. That will guarantee success on your first academic paper. It will practically write itself. Step number one, gather 10 research articles or 20 if you are a graduate student. For more information about gathering references, see my link in the description. Step number two, read and highlight the articles. But what do I highlight? Excellent question. You want to highlight one, conclusions made by the author. These are usually found in the abstract or in the discussion section. Number two, theories or rationale for their hypothesis. And these are usually found in the introduction section. Three, references to other articles. Because those articles they reference might just become one of your 10 or 20 articles. Number four, statistics or strong theoretical or logical statements that justify your research question or hypothesis. Because don't forget, when you write an introduction, you're trying to make the argument that your hypothesis should be investigated. And so if somebody gives a very good argument for why your research question has merit, it ought to be in there. And what should you not highlight? Probably anything in the results or in the method section. Why, you ask? Because when you're writing your introduction section, those minuscule details are really not that important, unless they made some big flaw that is kind of critical to your hypothesis. But only highlight these flaws if they're relevant to your paper. Otherwise, ignore them. Let's look at an example, shall we? So I am pretending to do a paper about gender bias in science, academic writing, something or other. And I found this cool article. Using the audition data, we find that the screen increases by 50% the probability that a woman will be advanced from certain preliminary rounds and increases by several fold the likelihood that a woman will be selected in the final round. So what did I highlight here? I highlighted a statement that basically summarize their conclusions. That's gonna be important for my paper. Let's look at another example, shall we? And for some reason, my highlighter did not want to highlight the first line. Go figure. As in research and economic, oh, I gotta use my other voice. <coughs> As in research in economics and other fields on double blind refereeing, C. E. G. Blank, 1991, the impact of a blind procedure is toward impartiality, and the cost of the journal here to the orchestra are relatively small. Why did I highlight that? That's a good argument. Blinding people to somebody's gender identity can make things easier to reduce bias and doesn't really cost anything. Maybe that strong logical statement is exactly what I need in my introduction to justify my research question. So step number one was gather 10 articles. Step number two was read and highlight them. Step number three, quote everything you highlighted. Yeah, you heard me right. Quote them, word for word. And when you quote them, make sure to give them a proper citation. Let's look at an example, shall we? So I'm gonna read from a document that I made, but you can see the PDF linked in the description. Article number one, Golden and Rouse orchestrating impartiality, the impact of blind auditions on female musicians. Using the audition data, the screen increases by 50% the probability that a woman will be advanced from certain preliminary rounds and increases by several fold the likelihood that a woman will be selected in the final round. Hey, you remember when I highlighted that? Guess what? I just copied and pasted. That's all. <laughs> so, uh... so it might be a little tedious, directly quoting everything that you highlighted, but that's okay. In this project, we're gonna favor tediousness so we don't have to tax our brains too much when we're writing our paper. So that's step number three, quoting them. Step four, paraphrase them, as well as add your own commentary. But what do I mean by commentary? Well, sometimes you might add additional insights. For example, the authors concluded that cold weather weakens immune system, but it could just as easily be the fact that more people are indoors. See what that quote does there? So the authors made a conclusion based on the data, but our additional commentary says, well, maybe we could interpret the data in a different way. Another form of commentary might be to make connections between papers. For example, just like Malcolm 1998, Jones 2002 also found that people who understand statistics are more attractive. It is true. Have you ever looked at yourself? So you can make connections between papers, or you could add other commentary relevant to your project. So maybe the authors of some study had a major weakness that you want to point out because it's relevant to your project. For example, well, Henry 2012 suggested that people do not find statisticians more attractive, his sample was flawed. 
The pictures they showed of statisticians were actually monkeys, not people. Or maybe they didn't have a weakness really, they just had a different target approach than you had. Dish. Target approach. Different purpose, whatever. For example... Well, there is experimental evidence that people generally find statisticians more attractive, Lyle, 2011. These studies, and similar studies, e.g. Malcolm, 1998, Jones, 2002, tended to study French Polynesian grandmothers. For this study, we will expand the population to Japanese grandmothers. You cannot study attractive people without including Japanese grandmothers. Thank you very much. So you're gonna paraphrase, you're gonna give your own insights, but it's important not to plagiarize. What's plagiarism? Excellent question, wise student of mine. Plagiarism means that you take somebody's ideas or words without giving them any credit. Hey, those are my ideas! So how do you avoid it? Rule number one, always, 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 Include a citation to them. Number two, make sure to write what they wrote, but in your own words. Let's look at a quote for an example. People say nothing is impossible, but I do nothing every day. A. A. Milne. So let's go ahead and plagiarize that. Lots of people say nothing is impossible. I do nothing every day. Notice there is no citation to the original author, and you're borrowing the same terminology the original author used without giving them credit. Not cool, dude. So let's go ahead and paraphrase them instead. Many will say that there is nothing that is impossible. I beg to differ. Every day, I do practically nothing. A.A. A. Milne. So we used almost none of the same words that the original author used. So we're not plagiarizing, and we gave them credit for it. So we are in the clear. So at this point, you have gathered 10 references. You have read and highlighted lots of things in those references. You have paraphrased. what You have copied and pasted verbatim those words with proper citations, and you have paraphrased and added your own commentary on top of that. Now guess what, people? You have basically written your entire paper. That's easier than doing cartwheels in a spaceship. Except it's not in order. So, step number five. Group your quotes by topic and add transitions, AKA write your paper. Let's look at an example, shall we? Here, I just have a Word document that basically has all the quotes that I made, and in red, I have highlighted the transitions and the additional insights that I added to make the paper seem a little more readable. I'm not gonna read this whole thing because you can read it yourself. And this PDF, along with other PDFs, will be linked in the description. So now you are well on your way to writing your first scientific paper. And by the way, speaking of credit, I gotta give credit where credit is due. This whole approach to writing papers wasn't my idea. I got it from a buddy of mine, Sam Lindsay. Sam and I were undergraduates together, and he was by far the most productive undergraduate researcher I have ever known. Dude had like 10 publications before he even went to graduate school. So I asked him one day, what's your secret, Sam? And that was his secret what I just told you. So now, best of luck with your academic paper, and we'll see you next time.